Hey guys and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel. I'm so glad because the last video was a success. I got a lot of comments, you know, good support, some new subscribers and more views than I've had on any other video. So I'm just glad it was a success. People are watching, it's whatever. I'm just really excited because now I get to continue and know that people appreciate my story. So what I wanted to do is go through my appointment that I had yesterday, which was March 29, 2018. Um, and also as of yesterday, I turned 37 weeks pregnant. At my last appointment, which is like probably a week and a half ago, I was, I think, 128 pounds. I'm now 131 pounds. So obviously I'm progressing. That's all I care about because at the beginning of the pregnancy, I really wasn't growing at all. I could still suck in. I wasn't looking pregnant. We discussed a few things about more about the bicornea uterus and what was going on with the baby. I'm just going to go through the list that we talked about. We get like this little sum after visit summary. And so I'm just going to go through it. Well, for prenatal care, I'm just doing obviously... Um, I'm taking my prenatal vitamins and that's it. I haven't taken any other pills this entire pregnancy. I am totally like against pills anyways. I just don't feel the need. I know that I could get over it naturally and I don't want that in the baby system just because I have a headache that will go away in like 30 minutes. The other thing that we talked about was intrauterine growth restriction, which has to do with the bicornate uterus. So like I was telling you guys last video, my bicornate uterus is heart shaped. And so, like I said, the baby picks a side to grow in. I, I'm not able to tell what side. I guess it was too late for them to tell me because I did ask what side that she was on. I'm not really sure if it matters. I'm not sure if it affects what happens, like the outcome of the pregnancy. I have no clue. Like I said, it doesn't give her room to grow because it's not a full uterus. It's just the half of the uterus that she decided to grow on. And so I guess apparently she's been growing up to date on every other appointment. They measure her head, her stomach, and they measure her thighs. Everything else has been proportional up until I guess this last appointment, he was telling me that her thighs have not been growing and it has to do with the restricted, the restriction inside my uterus. So she is, it says right here, maternal care for suspected poor fetal growth in the third trimester. So that is most likely going to mean that they're either going to have to have a c-section which i really like if you've seen the last video i was really like oh my god i'm not gonna have a c-section because she's not breached anymore so the chances of that are gone whatever and now it's kind of back so it's kind of scaring me again because i don't know what to expect now because now she just isn't able to grow anymore you know so They'll either have a C-section or they'll have to induce me or she's just gonna come out by herself real, real fast. On that note, I asked them to see if I'm dilated because I've been super curious and I know that it's early. He even told me, he was like, I can check you if you want, but most likely you're not gonna be dilated or anything. It's really early. I was like, it's okay, we can just check anyways. So he checked me, I am one centimeter dilated and i know that's not much and it doesn't really mean anything i was looking at the girl nurse and she was there i was just like i'm a centimeter dilated oh my god so um sorry i have the fan because it's really hot but it's like messing up my hair it's a big deal to me just i don't know first time moms i feel like anybody feel like i'm dilated like that means oh my god the hospitals won't usually take you until like you're three to four centimeters depending on how fast it's starting to increase in centimeters being one centimeter dilated i guess technically means you're in early labor but people can be in early labor for days for hours or for weeks and weeks so it doesn't mean you know anything it just i'm dilated it's cool once i hit about 30 
to four centimeters they take you in and that's when they settle you down start putting the ivs in you and be like all right it's time but that was mostly all from the visit he did schedule a growth ultrasound for next thursday i think that's the fourth or fifth of april i hope that everything's okay but i have a lot of questions to ask i'm very curious so i will let you know which questions i come up with because I'm not gonna remember them right now. The next video I'll let you know and I'll answer the questions for you. For this appointment, they either ask you if you want to do the Tdap vaccinations and just so that it will, you know, protect you and then it puts antigens in your body so that it will protect the baby too and when she comes out. So I did decline those. That's a whole nother story whole nother discussion but i don't mess with vaccines they also ask for like a gestational diabetes test and things like that so those are some things that you'll have to expect oh you guys haven't seen the baby yet i or the baby bump um so i'm gonna show you the baby so it's a lot bigger before i was able to suck it and you can tell she's dropped so but I've sat low this entire pregnancy, so it's kind of hard to tell if I drop, but they did confirm that with me. I just wanted to go over the doctor's appointment, everything that happened. I'm not having any newer contractions and anything like that. I'm not having any other symptoms besides just being more and more uncomfortable. My back is killer, like. <laughs> I cannot get comfortable for nothing. My boyfriend, he sleeps like with covers and covers and covers and covers. And I'm like, oh my God, like, I don't know how you do it. First of all, our heat's already on like 80. I don't know why, but he likes it warm. And I do too. But after this pregnancy, like I can't, <laughs> I cannot stand being hot. Like I can't do it. I will, literally, I will pass out. And then I don't know if you could tell probably throughout this video, but I run out of breath like nothing like And to get to our apartment you got to walk up two flights of stairs, but it's like three I'm like dang, Like it's a workout. I'm, not that I'm trying to induce the labor But I'm kind of trying to induce the labor and I'm finally full term so I It's not a problem. I've been getting a lot of tips sex kind of awkward whatever, but that's how I got in this position in the first place. That starts up contractions. Apparently, apparently it's not the actual sex, it's the sperm, I guess, has, I forget what it's called, but it has something in it that just starts up contractions, which obviously opens up your uterus. I, not your uterus. It opens up your cervix. Also nipple stimulation, basically, you know playing with your little nips. Walking, I guess there's certain foods, certain teas. Like I said, I am gonna do a video on the diaper bag and what's in my bag and what's in Devel's bag. But I've only packed her bag. I haven't packed his bag or my, actually he's gonna pack his own bag. But subscribe, like, and share because I just want to share my story you know, I have been going on YouTube this entire pregnancy and looking up all types of stories. Like each week that I'm on, every labor and delivery video out there, every diaper bag video. I'm so excited to meet my baby. But that's basically it for this video. Thank you for watching.